Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. We are talking about the documentary that came out today, Becoming Cody Rhodes. Uh, it debuted on the uh, the Peacock Network. I honestly was looking forward to seeing it yesterday. Uh, I thought it would be like a Sunday release, but they ended up, they, they, go, they went with the uh, 31st, which was a Monday. Um, that surprised me mostly because of Monday Night Raw um, being on uh, TV tonight, but I guess it debuted um, early enough um, during the day that most people actually were watching this while I was at work today. This was a really, really good documentary. Um, when I met Cody Rhodes at Disneyland the day after the Raw, after WrestleMania, um, I met him at California Adventures that day. Um, he was there with his family checking out the sights. He was wearing actually a hoodie um, that said uh, WWE uh, Documentaries uh on the on like the chest part of it and uh i honestly thought that was because he helped work with the um the dusty Rhodes documentary and he was the executive producer of that but uh, I, I guess it had to do something with uh with him helping with this thing um really really good um i know i beat on this a lot but uh since um WWE went away from uh, DVDs. Um, we haven't really got a really good wrestling documentary uh, in, in a while. Um, you know, they, they used to come out a, a few a year, whether if it was somebody on the roster at the time, whether it was somebody um, uh, from the, the past, um, that was a past superstar that was like a Hall of Famer, like the, the one like around 2000, 10, like the Ricky Steamboat documentary, that was really good. Um, and people bought those. I understand that people don't really go out and buy physical media, but I think that's really something that is lacking out there. Um, as soon as the Cody Rhodes documentary uh, ended, um, as I was uh, grabbing my phone and stuff to, to come out and make this video, a, a documentary on China um, came up. Uh, I think it was called Wrestling with Demons. Um, I had never seen that before. I didn't even know about it, so I don't know how I, I missed on that. But um, maybe there are more of these documentaries out there that I haven't seen that WWE has, has put together and, and released. Um, really good documentary. One of the things that I was really hoping that they were going to talk about um, was him wrestling um, Xavier Woods in high school. That's a very, very good podcast from, I don't know, I would I would guess 10 years ago, if, if, maybe not that long, but um, it's a talk is Jericho where Jericho is the host and on the podcast that day is Cody Rhodes and Xavier Woods and they talk about their uh, wrestling rivalry um, they had in Georgia at the time um, where Xavier Woods was hoping um, that uh, he would get a chance to beat Cody Rhodes or Cody Runnels at the time and um uh, you know, he would, uh, Dusty would say, oh, I'm going to train you to become a wrestler now um, because of that. It was, it was really, really good. And they both see the rivalry two separate ways. Um, and, and Xavier Woods did get his moment in the sun in this. Um, but uh, it, it made me want to try and find that old episode of Talk to Jericho. Hopefully I can find it somewhere. If not, somebody's, you know, put it up on, on YouTube or something like that. It's so old. I don't know if it's still going to be. Um, you know, in their archives of shows are, are easy to find. But um, this really was really, really good. I, I, I don't know anything that I would have taken out. Um, and the, the few things that I was thinking that I really wish they would have put in, I was looking at the time as it ended. It was right around two hours. Um, the stuff that I wish they would have talked about maybe pushes this into the two and a half hour range, which I maybe mean, you put this out on Blu-ray, it wouldn't be that bad. Um, with a whole bunch of like extra matches and things like that, but a two and a half hour documentary on a wrestler that hasn't even finished up his career on, on Peacock might have been a little bit too long, but this really covers everything um, from the end of Dusty Rhodes' career, him going into the Hall of Fame in WCW with Cody being there, um, you know, Cody sort of being at the end of Dusty's um, time in wrestling and... Um, you know, him having him around. They didn't really touch on this a lot, but from reading the um, Dustin Rhodes uh, book, uh, the Gold Dust book, um, I think it might even have Dustin. No, it says Dustin Rhodes on the front. It says Gold Dust too. Um, but his book talks about how, you know, Dusty as a father wasn't really around, but this was Dusty's second chance at fatherhood with a separate wife. Um, 
uh, uh, Dustin and his uh, brother, um, I'm sorry, Dustin and his sister have, have uh, a different mom than Cody and his sister. And, um, you know, Dusty was out on the road. Um, you know, working with Flair and WCW, those, um, you know, WWF days, by the time Dustin was, was old enough to get into the business, um, much like Cody did, um, you know, he, he just wasn't around. He was out making those dates and, 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 and making the money and, and just wasn't, wasn't there to be there. Um, when Cody was born, you know, uh, Dusty said that he was going to be there and they had two different childhoods because one had a father and one didn't, you know, one had his name and, and the other one actually had him, you know, taking him to wrestling practice, taking him to football practice. Um, you know, you know, day in, day out was the, the dad that was, was pretty much there. I mean, um, Dusty still did things for WCW. Um, at one point, Dusty left WCW and he was working for ECW. Um, but he's probably, you know, gone in the morning, back home the next day, um, you know, m uh, most days because he wasn't really a full time uh, worker. And, and Cody talks about the fact that, um, you know, his dad made sure that the family had everything that they needed. But, you know, they were at a point in Dusty's life that they were really falling on hard times because Dusty. You know, for every, you know, $10 that he made back in the day, he spent 20 And this is a guy that made lots and lots of money being on top, um, you know, for different companies over the days. But, you know, we, we really see one of the real goals that uh, Cody Rhodes has done in his career is that he wants to rewrite the wrong that he saw as a child. As a child, he saw Dusty wrestle a match against superstar Billy Graham at Madison Square Garden for the for the WWF championship this was you know before um Hogan came into the company before Wrestlemania um I'm not sure if it was Vince's company at the time or if it was, it, it was his father's but Dusty was being brought in as an attraction to you know um get a good gate for a Madison Square Garden show and Dusty beat superstar Billy Graham in a match I can't remember if it was by count out or disqualification. Um, he got to pose with the belt. He got to hold it up. Um, you know, he has the video and all that, but he did not become the champion. And uh, Cody does not believe that, that that is right, that Dusty isn't looked at as the WWF champion. And he wants to, to win that championship. And, you know, throughout the documentary, he's walking through the desert. You know, he's searching for this goal. Um, you know, near the end, once he... Uh, you know, wins the Royal Rumble and he goes on to WrestleMania. Um, it didn't really have the ending that we all were, was hoping that it was going to have. Um, they didn't really go into the whole thing with uh, him, uh, um, you know, going to the Brock Lesnar feud and things like that, trying to, I think, build him up more that people believe that he deserves to be that. I think there would have been a little bit of backlash. I don't know a whole, a whole lot. He was really over that weekend. He had a lot of fucking fans WrestleMania weekend. I was really surprised that he lost. And for the people that, that said that Roman only won to make sure that he, um, you know, was champion for a thousand days and, and set that record. I don't know, man. I, I He would have beat him by now. Obviously, they got a plan. I think it's Cody doesn't make really sense for it to be anybody else that Cody it's not really like they're they're building anybody else up, up out there to, to come in and uh, you know have a big match and beat this guy um, but uh, you know Cody finds it in the desert picks it up and he, and he brings it in but uh, you know from everything that they really talked about in this documentary from um, his time with um, debuting in the company I really wish they would have talked um, about the group with him, Orton, and uh, DiBiase Legacy. Um, they, they kept talking about, you know, the time that he main evented uh, the Hell in a Cell show with Rollins, that it was his first chance being um, in the main event slot. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think Cody with Legacy, they main evented uh, at least a pay-per-view. Um, I think the... The, the, the one that was called like Breaking Point, I think that was like the main event where it was DX against them uh, in a, in a uh, 
Was it in a hell in a cell or just in a cell? Um, I think that was the main event. If not, you know, I'm pretty sure at SummerSlam they didn't get the main event slot, but that DX versus um, uh, DiBiase and Rhodes match was, was pretty high up on the card. I mean, DX came out in a freaking tank. Um, but I, I really wish they would have touched on that a little bit more. They did, you know, talk about the... Uh, uh, bond between him and Orton. I wish DiBiase would have been there. Um, I think if it was an older documentary that would have brought him in, but then again, he is in a little bit of legal trummer, trouble right now with the, the state of, uh, what is that, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama? One of those, just like Brett Favre is, because um, kind of the same thing. Um, and, and we'll have to see what goes down with that. But, um, you know, if, if they would have got the, the, the interview about a year ago, I don't think it would have been a problem. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, just to touch on that a little bit more, I think it was pretty cool that he had his debut match on Raw against Orton. I didn't remember that, didn't know that. Um, talk about his first WrestleMania match with the breakup, um, of Legacy, because they kind of jumped right into WrestleMania 27 with the match against Ray. They didn't talk about the match at 28 where he lost to Big Show. Um, at that point, I think it was kind of off the rails. They didn't talk about 29 um, with the match him and Sandow and the Bellas uh, against the Funkadactyls, Brodus Clay, and uh, Lord Tenzai. They didn't talk about that match getting scrapped at Gorilla. But then, then again, I've always thought that was just kind of a, uh, a, a storyline for Total Divas. I didn't really think that was a real thing. You know, they, they had the publicize it so people knew about it but I don't think that match was ever really gonna happen when it was scrapped it wasn't like Wrestlemania 10 with that like 10 man tag with like Virgil and the Repo Man and other guys you know got scrapped because uh, the the uh, Macho Man uh, crush match as well as the ladder match uh, went long and they had to scrap something but um, I was really surprised to see the Young Bucks in there as much I mean they didn't sit down and do interviews but a lot of stuff they got from BTE, like them signing their AEW contracts, talking about All In, um, and, um, you know, just really talking about the fact that he built another company, even if Triple H thinks it's a second-rate company. I don't believe that, and I don't believe that Triple H believes that at all. Um, maybe that, you know, it's not the, the, the strongest competition, but on paper, I think there's people out there that, you know, when it comes down to whether they're going to spend money, whether if it's on, you know, pro wrestling tees or WWE shop, um, whether it's against buying this figure or that figure, I really think that there's um, a decision uh, to be made. Um, I, I don't think it's that small of a second rate company that uh, Triple H thinks it is. Um, but honestly, really, really good. Would love to see it put out like on a Blu ray or a DVD. Um, somehow, some way, I know that it will be somehow, some way, but at least like a real WWE release would honestly be really, really cool. But um, really, really fun stuff. Love to see what happens with the future um, with Cody, and we'll have to see where the story goes from here.